What is going on? I want to welcome you from Half Court for today, Tuesday, September 13th. I am your host, Sean Murphy, alongside my guy, Jeff Iafrady. Jeff, off of a weekend of football, we're closer and closer to basketball. That temperature outside, it's starting to cool down a little bit. It's starting to feel like basketball season, man. Holy <laughs> I'm ready. Me too. I'm so excited because we spent all summer, all of last season covering the Pistons, and it's a great thing. But now we got to watch them play basketball. This this yeah. is the easy part for us, getting to watch every single night. And uh, I'm missing it, man. Like I love yeah. football, and that, that and listen, I, I love watching football, but basketball that's my that's my passion. So yeah. when, when the NBA season comes around, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Jeff, have you realized this is going to be our first full season covering basketball together? It is. Isn't I'm that excited. weird to think about? Like you and I, like we started doing all this together around this time, like around like the last all-star break, like when the mm -hmm. all-star break was wrapping up. And so like we did like the second third, like you know, like the last third of the year together, but man, this is going to be the full rigmarole, man. I'm excited. Imagine the content. Imagine oh the content. Lordy. It's going to be, the content will be plentiful. And that's why you're going to want to hit that subscribe button right down there. But, Absolutely. Jeff, one of the things I have a feeling that we're going to be talking about a lot this season is obviously we'll be talking a whole lot about the Pistons, but I have a feeling we're going to be talking about some breakout players this year. And so you and I actually released an article today with another writer uh, at Woodward Sports. His name's Thomas Chavez. Be sure you go and follow him on Twitter, by the way. Really nice guy. Uh, really glad to do this article with him. And we talked about specifically candidates for uh, the Detroit Pistons for a breakout season. Now, obviously you know we went through and all gave like our own different opinions and our own different takes if you want like the written version and want to check that out you definitely can go there but jeff i figured what the hey we made this article let's talk about it because i think there's a there's a lot of interesting avenues that we can go down and i think the first and the most obvious candidate for a breakout season with the detroit pistons it's sadiq bay mm -hmm. and and the the type of breakout campaign that he could be in for i definitely think makes him deserve to be at the top of this list do you agree no question i think the departure of jeremy grant as well you can factor that in um sadiq bay is work ethic number one because we know how hard he's been working in the offseason mm -hmm. and number number three he's just going to have a, a much more significant role but also on top of that the only question we had is the inconsistency. If he could become in more consistent, the numbers are going to be there because it's not like yeah. he's a he's a timid shooter. He'll go out, he'll be aggressive. So yeah, absolutely. Sadiq Sadiq Bay is probably if you want to see the most likely to break out, I'd, I'd probably put Sadiq up there. Yeah, for sure. And, and like I think you know for Sadiq, I don't think he'll be a breakout star for Pistons right, fans right. because De define breakout. Define yeah, breakout. Yeah, that's exactly it. When when I think of like a breakout candidate for Sadiq Bay. I think for him, this is showing the league that he has arrived and that he could potentially be an all-star caliber player going forward. You know, even if he's not like that, that caliber of all-star, because even when you're an all-star, there's levels to this, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like he could be like that Chris Middleton type of all-star where, you know, he can get you a bucket. He's Mr. Consistent, reliable. He might not be like the takeover player on your team, but I mean, again, Jeff, you and I have both said it. He already has, you know, the intangibles to be like a damn good offensive player. But yeah, if we just make some more shots, that's just going to help him a long way. No. And defensively, that's the other thing with Sadiq Bay. Cause offensively, I think he's, he's going to be that guy, but yeah, defensively, the question marks he had last year, if he has the, the physical ability, I think he could be a much more, uh, uh, physical defender especially now looking at the team and look where his role is going to be like he could be playing three and the four so um you like him to be a better defender but offensively like you just said too with Sadiq Bay like he he's not only at, at first it was Sadiq Bay the shooter but now you could see his game expand through the season now he's in a full off season I'm excited to see what he's added but no question I even have a, a a theory that early on in the season he may be you know the number two shot taker but in front of Jay Nivey just because of the mm -hmm. roles like eventually oh, Jay yeah. might take that but I think Sadiq's gonna be much more involved early on so I'm excited to see him yeah for sure and and you know like anyone that that you know like when you're looking at like the amount of shots like where they're gonna be allocated I mean another thing too you know Jeremy Grant no longer gonna be right you know on the roster so I think that's just gonna give a heavier load for Sadiq not only on the offensive end but on the defensive end as well, people like to, you know, a lot of people really like to nitpick Jeremy Grant this last year and pick out all the things that they didn't like about him. You know what you're going to miss about Jeremy Grant this year? The fact that he went out and always guarded the number one guy on, on, on the other opponent's team. And specifically, that's if that's going to be Sadiq's role now, that's an adjustment, man. It's a real adjustment. 
Yeah, because you look at the size on this team. Like, look at the amount of wings we have. We have Livers, Sadiq Bay. I mean, those are the guys you're going to want to throw at, you know, your, your, your forwards, especially in the East. And defensively, we know Isaiah Livers, he's a very good defender. But with Sadiq Bay, like, he's going to have a bigger role this year defensively. So I'm glad you addressed that because that, that's the thing I'm going to be paying attention to for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be something that the it's going to be one of the biggest adjustments for the Pistons at the beginning of the season is not having Jeremy there on the defensive end. Obviously, they were able to, you know, adjust offensively because Cade took more and more of that lo load as the season went on. But, right. you know, again, not that Sadiq has like necessarily like been like a struggling defender. He definitely has the intangibles to be a damn good one. But, you know, as far as you're talking about where can you take those leaps, where there's next steps, every player in the league can improve in something on the right. defensive end. So definitely for sure. But let's talk maybe more so like who would be a breakout, not only to the NBA world, but to us Pistons fans as well. And I'm glad that you said the name Isaiah Livers, because that is a guy that I know that you are high on. I know it's a guy that I'm high on. I even just released an article as a recording today talking about how I think Isaiah Livers was just a diamond in the rough for the Pistons. And this is a guy with real lottery level talent. And Jeff, even guys like Rod Beard were saying that you could talk him into Isaiah Livers starting opening night. Mm -hmm. That's the type Good. of talent this guy has. And it, it all starts, number one, with the shooting ability. But on top of that, his defensive ability. Like last year, even in a limited sample size, because that's the thing. You want him to play a whole season. That's probably mm -hmm. number one for me. But the 42% from downtown. Like that stuff is going to be much more valuable this year. You have Jay Nivey. You have Cade. You have more playmakers. You got to get guys that can knock down shots. And I think Isaiah Livers is, is one of those guys, one of the best on the roster. Um, and I think this, this year with a bigger role, like we said, the, the trade of Jeremy Grant, you know, the, the the lack of forward depth. You have Kevin Knox now, but you don't really know what role he's going to be playing. I think Isaiah Livers is, is definitely up there for me in terms of how many how much more minutes he's going to be playing. But also the shot attempts, I, I know he's a, he, he can be a consistent. You got to see it in a bigger sample size because you right. can see it. I mean, 42% from deep. We'll see what he shoots this year. But even if it's close to 40, absolutely. He'll be playing both forward positions. It'll be on the court a lot, especially what he can do defensively. I mean, you saw in the summer league, I get it was in the summer league, but his motor. Like yeah. his, his leadership, like those things are going to help him get more playing time. So I'm excited for Isaiah Levers this year. Yeah, I'm sure Stephen A. Smith isn't in love with his motor, knowing, <laughs> knowing what he thinks about guys like yeah, that. But no, yeah, I mean, he only played 19 games last year. Like you said, you want a little bit, little bit more of a sample size. But Jeff, he was a 41% three-point shooter in college. So like this guy's just Absolutely. Mr. Consistent. It's not, a, it's not a shocker at all that he was able to translate that. But even then, the thing that I look at and the thing that I'm impressed about is that in those limited sample size, he had multiple, 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 like he had multiple multi steal games. He had multiple mm -hmm. multi block games. So, like, he was able to come in and have an impact on the defensive end as well. And so, if you're able to do that in, in your limited NBA sample size towards the end of the year when teams are competing, for playoff spots i mean this wasn't like you know even though like some teams might consider that part of the year and i know for us pistons fans it was kind of garbage time because this was just you know figuring out who you had on your roster it's not like the pistons were playing for a playoff spot but it doesn't mean that those are in insignificant minutes and it doesn't mean that the there aren't things to take away from it and jeff just how much of an asset can this guy be just from who he is as a person as well because oh my gosh like just the character that he has and, and just who who he is as a person he fits the Troy Weaver guy mold perfectly. What's the famous quote locally by Dwayne Casey? We like guys that make their bed in the morning. And I, yeah. I feel like Isaiah Livers is, is definitely that dude. Uh, like you said, high character guy, uh, the leadership ability. Because listen, you talked about a four-year player in college. Like those type of guys just walk in immediately with this different mindset. Just because he's he's been he's been in that position. Now he's with it again with the Pistons. So I think his leadership, uh, you talk about his consistency. I'm excited to see it because if he's consistent, then people are going to listen to you. If yeah. you're doing it on the court and you're preaching it, um, I think Isaiah Livers this year, I mean, he's he's got to be one of Dwayne's favorites. Like, just because yeah. he's reliable. You, you know you can count on him, um, especially as a person. I'm talking about not – I haven't seen him play an entire season, but as a person, you're like, this guy I can count on. Um, he just does it. He's like an extension of the coach in a way on the court. Yeah. Another Alongside Cade, because Cade yeah. is also that. Yeah, and the other thing, too, that's just going to benefit him so much. I mean, again, the only reason why he played – 19 games this last year is because he had that stress fracture injury right before the tournament mm -hmm. had to sit out for that there was about a six to seven month healing process and even then it was kind of hard to tell like what he was going to be like after he came back so therefore that's why that's really why he slipped to the second round before that he was evaluated as a lottery level talent and it was just a matter of could he get back to that and it seemed like towards the end of this year the answer to that was yes and the other thing that's going to benefit him 
he's going to have a healthy offseason. He had a healthy offseason. Right. So not only was he able to go and do things like the summer league or the program runs that we saw, but Jeff, he could actually work on his game instead of working on his health. And we both know when you can actually work on your game, that makes a huge difference as well. Yeah, and, you, and I've been seeing the videos as well, him working on his handle. Uh, there's the, the videos of him bouncing the tennis ball and dribbling with yeah. his, his right hand. Like that stuff, now he has a full offseason, and I don't want to just limit him to a 3 and D player. I think that'll be his role. But I think Isaiah Livers, I'm not going to say he has this ultra-high ceiling, but right. you talk about guys like Jay Crowder, these guys that are so valuable. Like if, if Isaiah go. Livers is what we think he is going to be, I'm telling you, every NBA team would like an Isaiah Livers on their team. So we're, exactly. we're lucky to have him. Yeah, In the if second he- round. Yeah, exactly. This P.J. Tucker, Jay Crowder type role where you come in, you do the dirty work, you take threes, you play difficult, you play hard defense. You know, you're you're always ready for your number to be count you know, to be called on for whatever the team needs. Like they're utility guys. They're the guys that come in and they're huge parts of championship teams. I mean, right. part of the you know, people talk about the improvement that Phoenix made when Chris Paul came. Part of that was when Jay Crowder came in, too. So, yeah, like you said, Jeff, if even if that's what he ultimately is is an NBA player. He's going to have a job as long as he wants one. Yeah. 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 No yeah. Doubt. And, and another thing real quick too, can we talk about how the, the U of M that John Beeline team, like some of that last roster that he had, a lot of those guys from that team are actually coming in and finding some success in the league. We we're talking about how he wasn't necessarily getting NBA level guys on that roster, but Jeff, multiple of those guys are successful players in the NBA. That's it not speaks, insignificant. No, it's not. It speaks. I think it speaks to Isaiah Livers also as a teammate because to be able to blend in with that, those guys have a role. Be good at his role. You talked about his, his shooting percentage in college. Like he, he's a guy that I really believe. Like no ego. You can drop him anywhere in the league, and he's going to be like, all right, I'm going to find my role, and I'm going to be the best at my role. So, oh yeah, that's what I respect by Isaiah Livers. He's he's humble. I guess is a way to describe. Yeah, it. and, and it, it's a great it's a great player. It's a great mindset to have on your team, no doubt. Oh, for sure. And again. He's going to be around the best creators he's ever oh, been around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, the the amount of open shots that he's going with to get. With the spacing. With the spacing, exa- too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's going to help a ton. Speaking of having the best creators that they've ever been around, I want to talk some Marvin Bagley a third for a second. Because, <laughs> because in this article that we wrote yesterday, you know, uh, obviously a lot of the breakout candidates, it was Sadiq, it was Isaiah Stewart. You brought up Isaiah Livers, which I'm glad that you did. Uh, for me... I personally went the direction of Marvin Bagley the third. And Jeff, it's not insignificant that the Pistons signed him this offseason, not only to a deal that is paying him twelve and a half million dollars a year, which is more than I projected, more than you projected, more than a lot of us probably thought, and the NBA world alike probably thought that Marvin Bagley was going to get in free agency, but in addition, they gave him a three year deal fully guaranteed. No team options, no player options. All intents and purposes, unless he's traded, Marvin Bagley's on this Pistons roster for the next three years. And all I'm saying, we've seen that he can play on the offensive end. Statistics show he can deter shots at the rim. If he just gets better on that defensive end, don't we have a damn good player in our hands? If... Yes, and I think he can. I mean, you, yeah. you talk about in Detroit, he's going to be held accountable, I think, with Dwayne Casey. And the biggest thing for, for Marvin, and we were talking before we recorded too, is is the, the weight off of his shoulders. Like that whole narrative being picked, you know, in front of Luca, the number two overall pick, the expectations they had in Sacramento, the environment he was in in Sacramento, the best thing that could happen to him in his career and his family is very high in Detroit coming to Detroit and I'm, it, listen, yes. he, he's going to be in a significant role this year. You mentioned it. Cause you, you listen, you've been high on Marvin Bagley and I'm, I keep, the more I think about it, I'm like, damn, Sean is right because Marvin this year, he's going to have the opportunities. He's, he's going to have, like you said, the, the best playmakers he's ever played with. And, and that's no shot at De'Aaron, but he just isn't the playmaker that Cade is and who we think Jaden will be. So he's in a great situation. He's and he's with an organization that really believes in him. So this year he's got all the tools to succeed. It's just up to him. And I think defensively, that's the biggest question mark. Yeah, I mean, not even just like we talk about Cade Cunningham, right? We all we all know how amazing of a playmaker he is. Right. Jay Nivey perhaps is the most athletic guard he's ever played with, and he played with De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, could be. And and that type of pick and roll combination with how dangerous of a slasher Ivy's going to be and how good at the rim Bagley is, 
that's a great pick and roll tandem there as well. But then even if he's on the bench unit, you still have Killian Hayes, which every, right. which say what you will about Killian Hayes is a damn good playmaker out of the pick and roll. So no matter what, there's going to be opportunity there for Marvin on the offensive end as well. And even to, to, you know, Coach Casey, a lot of people have touched on it. Marvin Bagley went out and made his own offense. No play last year was designed for Marvin Bagley. That's That's a big deal. Exactly. And so for a guy that can come in and get double digit points when the offense isn't even being run through you because say what you will about him, but he does crash the glasses on the offensive end. He does work hard to crash the glasses on the defensive end as well. There's just things that we've seen probably just shouldn't be playing the five. If we're just being honest, Marvin Bagley is not a five, but Jeff on this roster, I don't think he has to be. No, and even the best fours in the league don't like playing the five. I mean, Anthony Davis doesn't like playing the five, so I'm not yeah. going to hate him for that. It's just really de- – he could play the four, but it, it's just defensively, even if he's a really good defender. If he likes playing the four and he's damn good at it, there's no reason to move him unless you're playing small ball. But like you said, with Isaiah Stewart, Jalen Duran, like you're going to have guys that can play the five. Like that's not really right. a concern. With Marvin, it's like, are you a liability? like from a night to night basis on yeah. the defensive end. And if he isn't offensively, he's going to bring it. Um, it's just, again, it's, it's, I think it's the outside shooting for me and, and Marvin in general, just being more consistent. But honestly, as a player, like you said, he didn't have much drawn up for him last year. So imagine this year you're gay planning with Marvin. So I'm excited for him. And I yeah. think, uh, Everybody in Detroit wants him to succeed. So it, it, looking back, we can finish this season. We'll be talking about Marvin evaluating his performance. It's not like we can say he didn't have a chance. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited for him. Yeah, and that's the thing is that he has a franchise for the first time in a couple of years that believes in him. People forget like it wasn't just this past year. Like this has been a multiple year issue oh, where it almost seems like from year one on the Sacramento Kings treated Marvin Bagley with buyer's remorse. And as you can see with like the Pistons, like they haven't even done that with Killian. They've been patient with them. They've been waiting on him. And that's the thing with these young prospects is you need to give them the chance to be who they are because even the, like even as like I remember like listening to a lot of those interviews during summer league, even <laughs> Coach Casey was like, honestly, I don't really see how they didn't see a role for him there. <laughs> he was like, well, but like yeah. we'll take it. Like, and that's the thing is, even like if he just gets a little better on the defensive end, even if like worst case scenario he's not this awesome you know starting player, what if he's like a sixth man big who can come off your bench and get 10, 12, 14 points a night? Is that not valuable? You see what six men are getting paid now. Like, don't get me wrong. Even if Marvin at the at the best point, he's a six man or somebody, he's the first guy off your bench. Like, if he's giving me 15 a night, like, I'd say he just doesn't get better. He just stays at 14, 15. Yeah. Like, who wouldn't want that? Anyone in the league. For what you're paying him, $11 million? Like, he, he's going to outplay his contract, in my opinion. And I think what they signed Marvin for, three years for 33 like we could talk of all we want about what we preferred. I think we were about a million off. So honestly, yeah. I thought it was a good deal what they got yeah. from Marvin. And yeah. uh, I'm excited this year. Well, and even then the other piece of it too, is that the salary cap's about to go up. Pat right. contracts are about to boom. New media deals literally like a year or two away. So Nine like million. Yeah. Even, even the, the salary cap that they actually released for this upcoming season was above projections. So like, that's the thing is like, even, even though we're talking about, I'm not really sure about this deal. Just wait till you see the deal K gets. Cause it's going to, it's going to make your <laughs> jaw hit the floor. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. But with that, what do you think? Who is your candidate for the breakout player of the year? Let us know in the comment section down below. I know there are some players that we did not bring up just to name a few Killian Hayes, Kevin Knox, Isaiah Stewart. I mean, Isaiah Stewart's a guy you, Jeff, you and I are both extremely high on. And maybe yeah. we can talk about those other guys at a different time. But for now, thank you so much for tuning in. Follow my guy Jeff on Twitter at Jeff Iafrady and catch him Monday through Friday on the morning World Word Show. And also follow your boy at Sean at Court. But with that, we want to thank you all so much for tuning in. And we will catch you guys next time from Half Court. Sure to subscribe.